Madhyasya yato nivyad itaratas charte suavigyaswarat Tene Brahma Hudaya Adikabaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hudaya Adikabaye Muyantiya Suraya Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargomesha Tejo Vari Madam Yata Vini Mayo Yatra Trisargomesha Damna Svena Sadani Rastaku Hakam Satyam Param Dimahi Damna Svena Nirastaku Hakam Satyam Param Dimahi Oh my Lord Sri Krishna Son of Vasudeva O my Lord, Sri Krishna, Son of Vasudeva. O all-pervading personality of Godhead. O all-pervading personality of Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of manifested universes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause behind him. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. One is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universe. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction of the three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitravotra. Dharma Prujita Kaita Vatra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shivadam Tapo Trayon Mulanam Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Kimva Parir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetra Sadyo Hridi Avarudya Tetikra Vite Vihe Sususa Vistakshanat Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth. This Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. Which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth is the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such a truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It is beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. Is in, is in, is in itself <coughs> sufficient. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scriptures? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror galitam phalam. Sukhamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Sukhamukad amrita dravya samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Muhur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavukaha. Muhur Aho Rasika Bhuvi Bhavukaha. Expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O oh, expert and thoughtful men relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva 
gone. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna. Shrimvatam Svakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Hediantak Stohi Abhadrani. Hediantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidhu Noti Surit Satang. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. It's Righteous activity. It is self activity. And for one who hears about Krishna. And for one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within everyone's acts heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as a best wishing friend. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who is constantly engaged in hearing of him. Nasta Praesu Bhadresu. Nasta Praesu Bhadresu. Nityam Bhagavata. Nityam Bhagavati Vaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhakti Bhavati Nastiki Bhakti Bhavati Nastiki In this way a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, the word naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajastamo bhava. Tadarajastamo bhava. Kamalo bhadayas chaye. Kamalo bhadayas chaye. Chaita itar anavidam. Chaita itar anavidam. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. Stitvam sattve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service. By development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus. And material, I'm sorry, and thus material lust and avarice are diminished. And thus material lust and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat bhakti yogataha. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Bhagavat tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangha sajayate. Mukta sangha sajayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Vidyate hridaya grantis. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante sarvasam saya. Chidyante. Chasya karmani, chiyante chasya karmani, drista evat manishwari, drista evat manishwari. Thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection. Thus, bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Understanding the supreme absolute truth, personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna. From his devotees. And from his devotees. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. One can understand the science of Krishna. One can understand the science of Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 17, Texts 10 and 11. Yasya Raste Prajasravas. Yes, it is Pipsar Sarvas. Tasyante Sad Pasadubi. Tasyante Sad Yasadubi. Tasyamat Tasya Nasyanti. Tasyamat Tasya Nasyanti. Kirtir Ayur Bhagogati. Kirtir Ayur Bhagogati. Esura Gyam Paro Dharmo. Esura Gyam Paro Dharmo. Yartanam arti nigraha. Yartanam arti nigraha. Ata enam vadisyami. Ata enam vadisyami. Bhuta druham asattamam. Bhuta druham asattamam. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. O chaste one, the king's good name 
duration of life and good rebirth vanish when all kinds of living entities are terrified by miscreants in his kingdom. It is certainly the prime duty of the king to subdue first the sufferings of those who suffer. Therefore, I must kill this most wretched man because he is violent against other living beings. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. When there is some disturbance caused by wild animals in a village or town, the police or others take action to kill them. Similarly, it is the duty of the government to kill at once all bad social elements such as thieves, dacoits, and murderers. The same punishment also due to animal killers because the animals of the state are also praja. Praja means one who has taken birth in the state and this includes both men and animals. Any living being who takes birth in a state has the primary right to live under the protection of the king. The jungle animals are also subject to the king. They also have a right to live. So what to speak of domestic animals like the cows and bulls? Any living being, if he terrifies other living beings, is a most wretched subject, and the king should at once kill such a disturbing element as the wild animal is killed when it creates disturbances. Similarly, any man who unnecessarily kills or terrifies the jungle animals or other animals must be punished at once. By the law of the Supreme Lord, all living beings, in whatever shape they may be, are the sons of the Lord and no one has the right to kill another animal unless it is so ordered by the codes of natural law. The tiger can kill a lower animal for his subsistence, but a man cannot kill an animal for his subsistence. That is the law of God, who has created the law that a living being subsists by eating another living being. Thus, the vegetarians are also living by eating other living beings. Therefore, the law is that one should live only by eating specific living beings as ordained by the law of God. The Ishopanishad directs that one should live by the direction of the Lord and not at one's sweet will. A man can subsist on varieties of grains, fruits, and milk ordained by God, and there is no need of animal food save and accept in particular cases. The illusion king or executive head, even though sometimes advertised as a great philosopher and learned scholar, will allow slaughterhouses in the state without knowing that torturing poor animals clears the way to hell for such foolish kings or executive heads. The executive head must always be alert to the safety of the praja, prajas, meaning those who are take, take birth in his kingdom, both man, man and animal, and inquire whether a particular living being is harassed at any place by another living being. The harassing living being must at once be caught and put to death, as shown by Maharaj Brikshit. The people's government or government by the people should not allow killing of innocent animals by the sweet will of foolish government men. They must know the codes of God as mentioned in the revealed scriptures. Maharaj Brikshit quotes here that according to the codes of God, the irresponsible king or state executive jeopardizes his good name, duration of life, power and strength, and ultimately his progressive march towards a better life and salvation after death. Such foolish men do not even believe in the existence of a next life. While commenting on this particular verse, we have in our presence the statement of a great modern politician who has recently died and left his will, which discloses his poor fund of knowledge of the codes of God mentioned by Maharaj Brikshit. The politician was so ignorant of the codes of God that he writes, I do not believe in any such ceremonies and to submit to them even as a matter of form would be hypocrisy 
and an attempt to delude ourselves and others. I have no religious sentiment in the matter. You know who that is? I'm, I'm not absolutely sure, but I'm almost sure it's Nehru. He would say something stupid like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Contrasting these statements of a great politician in the modern age with those of Maharaj Pariksit, we find a vast difference. Maharaj Pariksit was pious according to the scriptural codes, whereas the modern politician goes by his personal belief and sentiments. Any great man of the material world is, after all, a conditioned soul. He is bound by his hands and feet by the ropes of material nature, and still the foolish, conditioned soul thinks of himself as free to act by his whimsical sentiments. The conclusion is that people in the time of Maharaj Prikshit were happy and the animals were given proper protection because the executive head was not whimsical or ignorant of God's law. Foolish, faithless creatures try to avoid the existence of the Lord and proclaim themselves secular at the cost of valuable human life. The human life is especially meant for knowing the science of God, but foolish creatures, especially in the age of Kali, instead of knowing God scientifically, make propaganda against religious beliefs as well as the existence of God, even though they're always bound by the laws of God, by the symptoms of birth, death, old age, and disease. Sila Prabhupada Ki There are many great points in this purport by Srila Prabhupada. But uh, one thing that I wanted to talk about today is this point. He is bound by his hands and feet, by the ropes of material nature, and still the foolish conditioned soul thinks of himself as free to act by his whimsical sentiments. That's a very important statement by Prabhupada. And what does it mean exactly? Well, Krishna explains this in depth in the Bhagavad Gita. He says, Prakriti Kriyamanani Gunai Karmani Sarvasaha Ahankara Vibhunatva Kartaham Itimanyate. He says, The spirit soul, bewildered by the influence of false ego, thinks himself the doer of activities that are in actuality carried out by the three modes of material nature. Now, most people would not agree with this verse. So, what do you mean? I, I, I'm the one that's deciding. Oh, you are? Do you remember deciding to be born? Do you decide when you're going to pass stool and urine? Well, someone might say, yeah, of course I decide. But no, usually one is forced to do it. I knew this one person who was trying to become a devotee. He and his wife were nice people, but very uh, opinionated. So this was in Berkeley, California. So they, were, they, were, they, they stayed in the parking lot in a uh, VW, uh, you know, tr uh, what do you call this, VW bus? Huh? Camper, Camper okay. And they did not, well, they claimed they did not pass stool or urine. They claimed that. <laughs> <laughs> because they were very careful in what they ate. Very, very careful. You know, they would basically just soak some grains and eat them. They wouldn't even cook them. They were very fanatical like that. So that's okay, because they were nice people. They liked to do their service. And uh, so as time went on, his wife became pregnant. So one day I talked to him. I said, Prabhu, are you going to take your wife to a doctor for some checkup? No, no, what do you mean? We don't need the doctor. Oh, okay, you know, I'm sorry I asked. <laughs> so, uh, and she was a very nice lady, a wonderful lady. So it came time, came time for the delivery. And he was going to do it himself in the VW bus or the VW trailer. Anyway, uh, at one point, they realized that there's some serious problem. 
So he panicked and he called some of the women. The women came, they panicked. So we had to call the ambulance. <laughs> the ambulance comes, <laughs> puts her on a stretcher, it takes her to the hospital. And fortunately, the baby didn't die and she didn't die. So the baby was born. So now they have a baby who definitely passed a stool. <laughs> and it's in the little VW. <laughs> so after some time, I mean, the wife finally put her foot down. She said, look, we can't live like this anymore. <laughs> were they passing stool on your own? They probably were, but very, very little because they were planning their intake to be minimal. Right. Now, have you ever heard a story like this before? Uh, this, you cannot make it up. Reality is stranger than fiction. You can't make these things up. So finally, he decides, I have to get some apartment, right? Now, he never worked before. He never, by the way, he was African. <laughs> a really nice guy. And his wife was a, a white American lady. And she was very nice, too. They're actually nice, nice people. But he finally got a job, and he used to put a suit on and go to the job, and he got an apartment, and he got a car, and all of a sudden he became a normal guy. <laughs> and of course, they didn't completely give up Krishna consciousness, but they were no more, you know, in Mangalarti every day and <laughs> chanting their rounds and things like that. So what's interesting about that is we're not really in control. That's why I'm telling the story. We are not in control. We're being forced to do everything. You know, uh, waking up in the morning, we're forced to wake up. Going to sleep at night, we're forced to sleep. Going to the bathroom, we're forced to do it. Eating, we're forced to do it. All these things are being forced on us. Being born, getting old, getting sick, dying. We're forced. No one's choosing to do these things. And, and, but yet, they're crazy enough to claim that they are independent. And, and the craziest people are philosophers, especially the modern existential philosophers like uh, Jean-Paul Sartre, the crazy French guy. He, he wrote a book saying, oh, we're all independent. You know, we have to be heroic in the face of nature. You know, writing big, big words like that. Mm -hmm. But all nonsense people. I actually met him once. Uh, you know, I, w I didn't actually talk to him, but I would see him at this uh, cafe in uh, Montparnasse. Uh, it's a neighborhood in, in Paris. We used to do Sankirtan there. Fourteen hours arrondissement. Huh? Quatorze arrondissement. Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Arrondissement. Yeah. So. Prabhupada says, two persons, one in Krishna consciousness and the other in material consciousness, working on the same level, may appear to be working on the same platform, but there is a wide gulf of difference in their respective positions. The person in, Krishna, in material consciousness is convinced by false ego that he is the doer of everything. He does not know that the mechanism of the body is produced by material nature, which works under the supervision of the Supreme Lord. The materialistic person has no knowledge that ultimately he is under the control of, of Krishna. The person in false ego takes all credit for doing everything independently, and that is the symptom of his nescience or ignorance. He does not know that this gross and subtle body is the creation of material nature, under the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and as such, his bodily and mental activities should be engaged in the service of Krishna and Krishna consciousness. The ignorant man forgets that the Supreme Personality of Godhead is known as Rishikesha, or the master of the senses of the material body, for due to his long misuse of the senses and sense gratification, he is factually bewildered by the false ego, which makes him forget his eternal relationship with Krishna. So here it's focusing on the false ego. And this is a major theme in Bhagavad Gita also, where it says 
the thirteenth chapter, near Mana Moha. Mm. Yeah. Is that the thirteenth chapter? No, it's not the thirteenth chapter. Oh yeah, it's the fifteenth chapter, right. Nirmana Moha. Yeah. Verse number five. Nirmana Moha Jita Sangha Dosa Adhyatma Nitya Vinivritta Kama. Dwandera Vimukta Sukadukha Samgair Samgair Gajanti Amuda Padam Aveyam Tat. Those who are free from false prestige, illusion, and false association, who understand the eternal, who are done with material lust, who are freed from the dualities of happiness and distress, and who, unbewildered, know how to surrender unto the Supreme Person, attain to the eternal kingdom. So Prabhupada says, the surrendering process is described here very nicely. The first qualification is that one should not be deluded by pride. Because the conditioned soul is puffed up, thinking himself the lord of material nature, it is very difficult for him to surrender unto the supreme personality of Godhead. One should know by the cultivation of real knowledge that he is not, he is not lord of the material nature. The supreme personality of Godhead is the lord. When one is free from delusion caused by pride, he can begin the process of surrender. For one who is always expecting some honor in this material world, it is not possible to surrender to the Supreme Person. Pride is due to illusion, for although one comes here, stays for a brief time, and then goes away, he has the foolish notion that he is the Lord of the world. He thus makes all things complicated, and he is always in trouble. The whole world moves under the, this impression. People are considering the land, the earth, this earth, to belong to human society, and they have divided the land under the false impression that they are the proprietors. One has to get out of this false notion that human society is the proprietor of this world. When one is freed from such a false notion, he becomes free from all the false associations caused by familial, social, and national affections. These faulty associations bind one to this material world, and after this stage, one has to develop spiritual knowledge. One has to cultivate knowledge of what is actually his own and what is actually not his own. And when one has an understanding of things as they are, he becomes free from all dual conceptions, such as happiness and distress, pleasure and pain. He becomes full in knowledge, then it is possible for him to surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So what is it that we actually own, or that we can call our property? Actually, it's Krishna. We can own Krishna. That's the only thing we can actually own. We don't own the body. We don't own material nature. We don't own the house, the car. It looks like we own it, but... No, it's gonna, all these things are going to be taken away. There's only one thing that cannot be taken away from us. What is that? It's Krishna. We have an eternal relationship with him. See? But when we say we own Krishna, uh, we actually mean that we belong to Krishna. But because we belong to Krishna, we cannot be separated from him at any time. That's the only thing we have. That's real. Everything else is false because it's going to come and go, okay? including this body. In fact, as we discussed yesterday, you change the body every second. Every second we're uh, producing three million blood corpuscles and in, in 24 hours it becomes 200 billion, right? So you're actually changing the body every day and every second. So we have to understand what is it that we actually own? Because if we say I own this car, this house, this 401k, or this wife, or this husband, or these children, and 
and so forth, we get entangled. Just like this uh, African friend of mine, he thought he owned his body and he could control it completely. But nature took over at a certain point and he got, he got trapped just like anybody else, right? Uh, so we cannot persistently be a controller. We're all going, because our natural position is to be controlled by Krishna and to be subordinate to Krishna. Until we realize that point, uh, we suffer and we create uh, difficult situations. I, like this man's wife almost died because he was a fanatic. So this false ego, this idea that I am the owner, I am the controller, I'm independent, uh, is defeated in the Bhagavad Gita. So the first verse I read is from third chapter, 27th verse. The second verse I'm going to read is fifth chapter, eighth and ninth verse. It says, a person in the divine consciousness, although engaged in seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, eating, moving about, sleeping and breathing, always knows within himself that he is actually, that he actually does nothing at all. Because while speaking, evacuating, receiving, or opening, or closing his eyes, he always knows that only the material senses are engaged with their objects and that he is aloof from them. Now, how many people would accept this? Very few people. Prabhupada says, a person in Krishna consciousness is pure in his existence and consequently has nothing to do with any work which depends upon five immediate and remote causes. The doer, the work, the situation, the endeavor, and fortune. So I'm going to stop right there and we'll start tomorrow from this point because this is getting into a lot of philosophy. The five factors of every action. A very important point to understand. So we'll stop right there. Are there any questions? How is it in the spiritual world? Like there also to be Lord or something? Like once. I have to speak in the microphone. So what is the so once uh, the spirit soul goes to uh, in the spiritual world in Goloka? So there also do we lord over something, or what is the reason why we come down? Is there false ego also causing problems there? Well, we came down. But once you go back, you don't come down again. Just like, let's say somebody calls you up and says, Mr. So-and-so, uh, you just won a free vacation for two to Mazatlan, Mexico. Do you want to receive the airline tickets by snail mail, or you want to pick it up at the, uh, or you want to get email, or do you want to get, pick it up at the airport? And you say, I'll pick it up at the airport. They say, okay, this is the date, this is the flight number, etc. cetera. So you and, you and your wife are ecstatic, right? And you get all ready, you go to the airport, you have all your luggage with you, and the kids and everything. And you get there, and you go to you wait in the counter. It's a busy day. Your turn comes, and they say, "Yes, how can we help you?" And say, "I have a flight. Uh, this is the flight. This is my number. This is my name." And they look at it, and they you know because you had it uh, written down, and uh, they look and say, "You're not on this flight." I say, "What? What do you mean I'm not? I want to. I want this." Uh, they said, "No, you're not on the flight." And uh, you're like bewildered, right? Also, you, when they told you to, you you, go, you have a, a free ticket, they also ask for your social security number just, you know, for identification. And you find out that you're $5,000 less in your bank. <laughs> <laughs> so you call up the number and, and, it's, it's, uh, they, and they tell you that this number has been canceled. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you break into a cold sweat. Your wife is looking at you. The kids are really upset. And you realize that you were cheated. So the next time you get a phone call, they say, Mr. So-and-so, you have just won a free ticket to Cancun, Mexico. How would you like to receive the ticket? <laughs> Snail mail or 
email or would you like to pick it up at the airport? What would you say? I'll slam the phone down. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So that's the point. W once you go through millions and millions of births and deaths in the material world and then go through a whole process of becoming Krishna conscious and everything and you go back to the spiritual world, believe me, you will never fall down again. After going through all that misery, you never would fall down again. Right? So now the question is, why did you fall down? Okay. Because you have limited free will. Why sometimes you don't come to Mangalarti, you tell me. Yeah, because it's, it's like I'm too lazy to wake up. Uh, exactly, right? You have free will, right? Yeah. We can't force you, yeah. right? Even if your wife says, get up, go. You know, you know, so now I'm tired today, I'm not going. So you see, we have free will, and, and you can exercise it at all times. It's just like you thought you had won the t free ticket, right? Then you found out the whole thing was a, a crock, as they say in English, right? It was all, all hooks. So you would never make that mistake. Yet. You might make another mistake, because the thieves, they always think up new ways of cheating people. Yeah. See? But that way, you'll never get cheated again. Yeah, after that mistake, it will no longer be my free will. It will be my wife's free will. Yeah, after she won't, she won't believe you anymore. <laughs> She'll always remind you of this major mistake you made. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, well, we make a mistake. We become attracted by the glitter of the material nature and the promise for independent sense gratification. Just like you want to be Krishna conscious. Like This is a true, another true story. There was a person who was initiated. It was a good devotee. And his guru was very strict with him, and he was very strict in his following. But his guru also told him that, you know, I'm building a temple, so I need to get money, so you're a grihasta, you, you should try and make some money and send it to me. So now he's concerned about making money, right? Because his guru said, you know, if you can, do this. So he was thinking in different ways how to make money. And he, because he didn't have much experience, he decided to sell Amway. You know what Amway is, right? Multi-level marketing. Yeah. So then he started pestering everyone in the temple <laughs> to be his downline in Amway because he heard, you know, the check will come in every month. All the checks will come in and you'll, you'll be a, a millionaire. Right? And he became obsessed with it. And one thing led to another. He tried to convince me to uh, because every Sunday people were coming to the temple to convince the people coming to the temple who he said, well, everyone follows what you say. So if you and all these Indians are coming, they're all working at Microsoft. So, you know, you can make a lot of money and build a new temple. And I said, are you crazy? I said, is that why we're having Sunday feasts and uh, going through all this trouble and going out of Sankirtan and doing festivals in, in order to have a downline? in order to convince the, the people coming to the temple to, to, to buy Amway products? I said, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that. So, you see how people become, I mean, he, he was a devotee. He was a good devotee, but he got, became bewildered. And those are all personal choices. We have, free, we have limited free will. So when I tried to convince him to stop this, you know, just get a job, just get a go, go work in Safeway, you know, uh, you can you can make money and send the money, you know. And he didn't want to do it. He he was he was bewildered by Amway. So that's what happens. It can happen to anybody at any time. For one person, it's Amway. For another person, it's uh, uh, a new partner. Another person, it's a car. You know, whatever it is, they get attracted to it and they forget everything else. Yeah. So Maharaj, why this happens, like in your, this example, that person is very good devotee and then he got bewildered. So just by one instruction that send money that bewildered him or like what, like he's doing sadhana and he's strict and suddenly he's on the wrong path and... Well, I mean, his guru asked him if he could, you know, 
make some extra money to send it to him. So he thought, okay, this is my duty, right? But he didn't ask any advice any, from anyone who's got more experience than him as far as making money, you know? And he thought, oh, this is ideal, Amway. You know, I just convince everybody to become my downline and I'll get the check every month. They're gonna work their butts off and I'm, I'm gonna get the money and I'm gonna send it. But it doesn't work like that. The whole idea of multi-level marketing is cheating. And the only people that actually you can convince are your family members or, or people in your congregation. You know, you go out on the street, you're not gonna convince hardly anyone. Yes. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's all cheating. So, and, you, and people get bewildered by it. When I was in uh, college, the, I, my friends, they tried to convince and they took me to the session as well there. See, <laughs> and, and yeah. in India there's so much cheating. Oh, yeah. And, in that way. and with Krishna's grace, I didn't uh, like that, and I dropped the idea. <laughs> <Are you both? laughs> so, I have a question. So, um, sorry, Maharaj, I have a question. Um, you mentioned that uh, actually we don't own anything, right? Uh, and that's r true, that we don't own anything. No, no, I said you own one thing. You yeah, own yeah, I'm coming to that. We are saying that <laughs> we don't own anything. Uh, and I think, yeah, I totally agree on that. It's like we don't own anything. Everything is by Krishna's mercy. So you said that Krishna, you own the Krishna, right? But at times, right, you may not own Krishna, right? Because Maya takes away Krishna okay. from you. So how no, no, really me, you can me, own let Krishna? Me, let me say it differently. You're never separated from Krishna. Okay, so you, when you own something, you, you have possession of it, right? But let me say it in a different way. You will never, you're never separated from Krishna. Krishna is in your heart. Krishna is in every cell of your body. Krishna is in every atom, right? And you're, Krishna is within you and he's without also, right? You can never be separated from Krishna. Let's put it like that. Let's not say you own Krishna. But you can never be separated. It's the only yeah. thing that you can never lose is your relationship with Krishna. You might, just like when you go to sleep, you might forget things. But when you wake up, you remember, right? So uh, we're in a sleeping condition right now, you know, dreaming all kinds of uh, fantasies. But when we wake up and become very sober in Krishna consciousness, we, su we suddenly realize, wait a minute, you know, no one can take Krishna away from me and, I'll, and Krishna's always been with me. It's just that I was just unconscious. Mm -hmm. yeah. But everything else, your car, your house, your family, your, you know, whatever you think you own, you're going to, you don't really own it. Yeah. It's going to be taken away from you at one point. So is it correct to say that since you, if you are the body which is temporary, you cannot own anything that is temporary. But if you, your soul, which is eternal, then you can be a part of something which is eternal. Which is it's Christian. not that you can be. You are part and parcel of Krishna. You can't change that. Uh, it's not that you become so something. Yeah. It's something that you are by nature. Naturally, you're part and parcel of Krishna. You can only forget it. But that doesn't change it. Just like... Uh, sometimes, you know, I think I've lost a $20 bill or, or lost, lost some money. Actually, what I did was, I, I forgot it, it was in a pocket of a pants, and I, I put the pants in the washer, right? But, you know, sometimes uh, it takes time to realize, you know, uh, that uh, actually it's in the pocket, right? So for maybe four or five days, I'm thinking I lost this money, you know, I'm in anxiety, how did it happen? Right? But then, you know, when I put this pants on, I put my hand in the pocket, oh, there it is, right? So I realized the whole th I was an illusion. So that's happening to us all the time. You know? but, but, but the money is there. And just like Krishna is there, you can never be separated from Krishna. That's the only thing that, that can never be changed. So that's real. Everything else, it's not real. It's, when I say it's not real, yes, there are cars, there are houses, there are family member, all those things are there, yes. But you have to understand that this is not a permanent thing. It could, you could be separated. But Krishna, you can never be separated from. Yeah. I think I read somewhere, Maharaj, 
where the people are in. They, everything can be taken away from us, but the only uh, the thing that can be, cannot be taken away from us is a right to surrender to Krishna. Yes. That Anytime right, you that's can surrender. right. It can be, never be taken away. But only in the human form. Sure, of course. Philosophy, of course. Yeah. Human beings. But free will also cannot be taken away. Yeah. Free will also. No, animals don't have free will. Ah. Only human beings, the human form has free will. Limited free will. It's not Sorry. complete free will. It's limited free will. What does unlimited free will mean? That means you're God. God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Indirectly, you're God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're not God. It's limited free will. And, and our free will is only two things. Either you surrender to Krishna or you don't surrender to Krishna. And either way, Krishna will knows what's going to happen to you. Yeah. Haribo. Haribo. All glories to Prabhupada. It's a big subject.